In the words of Bernie Glassman, at its deepest, most basic level, Zen or any other spiritual path for that matter, is the realization of the oneness of life in all aspects. It's not just the pure or spiritual part of life, it's the whole thing. It's flowers, mountains, rivers, streams, and the inner city and homeless children. It's the empty sky and the cloudy sky and the smoggy sky too. It's the pigeon flying in the empty sky, the pigeon shitting in the empty sky, and walking through the pigeon droppings on the sidewalk. The cut rose shining in the vase in the living room, the garbage where we threw away the rose, and the compost where we throw away the garbage. Zen is life, our life, a life without limits. Now, the bakery came about because they really looked for a livelihood and he wanted a business. There was a time when the Grayston Bakery, we made wonderful cakes and tarts, and on the brown boxes that they came in, it said, Grayston Bakery, a livelihood of the Zen community of New York. I loved that <laughs> because they were these beautiful cakes, beautiful tarts, and they were made not just by us, but they were made by local people, or as sometimes he used to say, the people that other people threw away. Once a month, he would take a full afternoon when everybody stopped working. So the bakers who were on, on shifts and had to produce a quota, they stopped working. And he would bring them all together. And he was called, that was the mandala afternoon. Mandala is, again, the circle of life. And all the time we were expanding the bakery in around 87 is where we got the contract with Ben and Jerry's. And Ben was just fantastic. And there's a whole, I'm sure he'll tell you, the whole story of Ben meeting Bernie and their walk around Gold Lake, which has become almost mythical. It was a delightful walk around the lake. Uh, with the uh, Jewish Buddhist nuclear physicist monk. Jerry and I were outcasts uh, going outside the limits of what business was supposed to be. You know, we had an immediate need for an alternative supplier of some thin, chewy, fudgy brownies. And Bernie happened to have a bakery and uh, the deal was struck. We were such amateurs. And the job was to create a product that was already in existence and to make a product that was exactly like it. And it was very hard to match. Finally, we got a sample that we really liked and we said, okay, can we get 10,000 pounds of these? He said, yeah, no problem. It'll take us a few weeks to make that quantity and then we'll ship them up. And, and we brought them onto the production floor, they were ready to start making the brownie ice cream sandwiches, and they open up these boxes, and they're all stuck together. We were not a professional bakery, and I think that Ben & Jerry's, as a company, would have given up on us a long time ago, but Ben Cohen said, I want to make this work. Somebody came up with the idea of just taking the little bits of brownies that we could kind of get from these big blocks and, you know, chop them up and throw them in the ice cream. It turned out to be a great flavor. We called it chocolate fudge brownie. I can't imagine how many millions of dollars in profit that Ben & Jerry's has made off chocolate fudge brownie. So open hiring to me means you are willing to hire and work with a person without checking their background. And so you don't have to do all this kind of background screening up front, which is basically just like, are you ready? Are you worthy? Are you worthy? Are you worthy? But in the context of open hiring, you're worthy. Knowing that others may not hire some people because of whatever they have, but Grayston has an open door, no question asked. 
and they hire everyone and it changes people's lives. So I think that concept is still here and it's working. You know, open hiring presents a lot of challenges in different ways, but that also allows everyone to grow at the same time. So, you know, with with most food manufacturing establishments, you, know, you kind of pick and choose who you're hiring. Grayston says, none of that. We're going to open our arms to anyone who wants to come work here. So that means we have to really be on our stuff, you know, so we provide a lot of training and most importantly, we provide a lot of coaching. And I said, so wait, they put their name on this list. That's all they have to do. And then they have an interview. No, no, no. When you get the call, you get the job. So I was like, okay, no background checks, no interview, no resume. They automatically get the job. And this has been going on for how long? At this time it was 34, 35 years. It's not about the past. Every day at Grayston is an opportunity to move forward. So it's a dignity-based hiring process in which you use what we as social psychologists all know is that trust that you place in other people typically gets trust back. You create a virtuous cycle of trustworthiness that way which is oftentimes misunderstood. It's like the opposite. It's like, I mistrust you until you prove yourself trustworthy. And so you oftentimes get into this cycle, this vicious cycle of mistrust. And that starts with a traditional hiring process. What you see, not always, but often, is when you place that trust in another person, they want to live up to that. I was released from prison January 28th, 2022 of this year. The parole board granted me parole release based on actual innocence. I was an innocent man, convicted, in 1985 for a crime I didn't commit. I had to do nine months in solitary confinement, and there was guys, we would sit there and wait for people to break. Like, they'd lose their mind, start kicking on the doors, going crazy and stuff. Two of, actually, two of my neighbors used to work here, and they both kept saying, go to Greystance, go to Greystance. And I'm like, well, what's that? And then, you know, someone brought me here, because I never knew about the company. I used to just eat the brownies, I mean, the ice cream from the store. <laughs> it begins with the people. Our tagline is we don't hire people to bake brownies, we bake brownies to hire people. And this is particularly true of Grayston, is uh, they see the humanity in people. And that's not something that business always does that well. It's good for me to work here, like I said, but I, I still want to school. So as time goes on, I think I'm going to be the manager. <laughs> That's my wish, and that's my dream too. When we bear witness to what is denied, we learn, we open to what is. There is a healing process in that. The things that we are in denial about teach us. We don't teach them. They teach us. So overall genesis of the business here is that a partnership with Ben & Jerry's they said, hey, we'll put your brownies in ice cream. We'll actually make a flavor for you. And they grew, graced and grew. But what hasn't been proven out is independent of that, is there a business model that has enough jobs to support open hiring, but that we can be profitable at so you can actually pay the people. Eat a brownie, change a life. You purchase a brownie, you can change a life. So we really want our customers out there to focus on when you see that brownie sitting on the shelf, you can pick that up, you know for certain, you're not only having the best brownie in the world, but you're also helping to change your life. Most processes, most companies are looking to automate and remove the human intervention, but Grayston, Grayston says no way. You know, the only automation we're going to add is to make things safer, to make things easier, but we want to keep every position we can. To create more jobs, you actually kind of want a manual process because people have to be able to come in and do. And yet, if you're a more manual process, you're not going to be very cost efficient. You're not going to have lower costs. It's hard to have the right pricing to be competitive in the world. If you're going to run a business, you have two choices. You can run it the old way and uh, maximize profits and screw everybody else, or you can run it the new way and combine uh, socially positive, progressive change with making a profit. You have a choice. And, and it depends upon where you are as a person. If you are a person who 
cares about other people, people who've been screwed, whatever, you can run a profitable business in such a way that it helps alleviate those social problems. If you're a person who doesn't give a shit about those people, you can run your business that way too. But you should not be in a mode where you're thinking, well, I'm going to run this for-profit business. I'm not really going to have uh, a big social mission, but I'm going to give away a half a percent or a percent or maybe even 2% of my profits. That doesn't help. If we're making profit, they're gonna think we're greedy and why don't they get paid more? And my experience has always been the opposite. If you ground people on, no, we need to make a profit so we can invest in the business to keep the business going so you have a job and then also so we can grow and invest in business so you can get promoted. And when people begin to understand that, they're like, oh, I want you to make a profit. When people begin to get engaged on that, it's so empowering. that they gave me a shot to come here. You know, came here, I stopped going to jail. That's the best thing that ever happened to me. This place is just, it's incredible. <laughs> My dad had a history that only Grayston would have supported. And that's part of why I do this, is for him, because he always taught me that your past doesn't define your future. And I want to give that to everyone here. And that's why I don't want to leave. <laughs> we done been places where they haven't been. You know what I mean? And they've been places that I haven't been either. And so along the way, um, with, team, with actual teamwork, oh, we can get there. There's no doubt about it. I feel like a player. I'm so strong. I'm so fun.